Today, you are going to get a front row seat to the memorable behind the scenes story of how the 1995 Rugby World Cup was won with Springbok assistant coach Casey Pinar. Casey, welcome to Front Row Rugby. Oh, thank you very much, Peter. It's, it's an honor to be on it. Now, just before you and I begin our conversation, here's a look at today's trivia question. Who scored the opening try at the 1995 Rugby World Cup? Now, if you know the answer to the question, you can put it in the comment section down below. And we'll also find out if Casey knows the answer, or perhaps I should say remembers the answer. But we'll do that at the end of our conversation. Casey, let's go back to 1995, the most appropriate starting point. How is it that you actually became the Springbok assistant coach? I coach, I start coaching first the, the, the seven aside squad. And then I start in in ninety in ninety three. I coach first with Mac, Mac Ian Mac, the great coach Ian Mac. And then after that, uh, Kitch become the coach. And then he asked me to stay on and and to coach with him. So that was a great honor for me to do that. And what were you actually expected to do in that role in those days? No, he asked me to uh, because I was coaching the Free State Cheetahs. Many years, I was the backline coach, and he asked me, "I must uh, if I can join him, can 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 join him to coach the backline." And uh, yeah, that was a great uh, honor for me to do that. And yeah, so I do that. And what was your relationship like with Kitch? No, he was a fantastic man. He was a great coach. He was uh, in no his knowledge of the game was unbelievable, and and and, and uh, a big, a big one of Kitch was he. He know players. He know his personal conversation with players. He know players. He know what to do, what to 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 do with the players, the chat with the players, to psych to psych the players up. So he was a unbelievable uh, person to do that. And then going into the tournament, as I remember it, the Wallabies were the defending champions and England were the Five Nations champions. They had just won the Grand Slam as well that year. So I think those two were probably the hot favourites. And then South Africa were maybe in a second group of teams along with New Zealand and France uh, that were considered as a team that could win the tournament, but maybe not the outright favourites. What was the feeling among the staff at that stage? Since day one, we, we start as a squad training. We... We had meetings and said, you know, we've got the players, we've got the skill, we've got everything to win the World Cup. And and in our favor was it is in South Africa. And from that day one, the, the, the players, coaches, the coaching staff, managers, everyone believe in each other and know we can do each other. But then we must stick together, train together, eat together, believe in each other and that's what happened. Talk to me about that opening match against Australia. Yeah, what the what the unbelievable uh, starting for us, and uh, I think we that's 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 what we said we want to win the first game, and that was unbelievable. The atmosphere at Newlands was it's actually my favorite stadium to play a Test rugby. It's it was the old uh, old uh, Newlands. Yeah, I can't tell it. That was just the. Uh, it was just magic, the atmosphere, the people before the game and after the game. And that was unbelievable. And then the next match we played was actually against Romania, also at Newlands, an opponent that we were expected to beat quite comfortably. But we actually struggled a little bit, even though we did win the match. What do you think was uh, the issue that day? You know what, what Keith said? We, after the, after the, uh, the, the Australian game, Keith said, we're going to train hard. So long we win the, the game against Romania. And that was a tough one. They are hard players, they they tough on the field, but we pull it through and we and and that's that's what we want to do. And then next up we were up against Canada and there was all sorts of drama that night in Port Elizabeth, the lights going out before kickoff, and then of course there was that fight that broke out. What did you make of all of that? Yeah, we was worried a bit and you know, but what we said we it we must win that game also. And uh, yeah, that was that was a difficult one with the lights, players sent off. But what we said to each other, we must stick together, stay to uh, stay to the game plan, what we want to do. So long we win. the The score is not is not matter, but we have to win that game. 
And then, as you know, Peter Hendricks and James Dalton were cited after that match and they were ultimately suspended and we lost them for the rest of the Rugby World Cup. How disruptive was that to the squad? Yeah, but they was, uh, even they, they were suspended, but they were still part of the group. And uh, we keep him in the group because we, want, we said from day one, we're going to stay as a group, as a squad. And that's what we did. And, uh, and the other players came in in their places. They played outstanding. They're playing good rugby, if you can. Chester Williams. And he had a fantastic World Cup after that. And yeah, same with with, with uh, the hooker. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, play. Oh, can you believe it now? Uh, Rousseau, Chris Rousseau. He came into the squad, and and Narka came in, and they all give hundred percent. Casey, off the field, I think it's fair to say that the public really embraced that Springbok squad. What did that feel like? You know, we had from day one, we had the support. You know, in training. There was thousands of people watch us train, and that give us that 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 uh, momentum. They give us that secure. The people is is behind us, and 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 that just motivate us to do well, to stick together, game for game, day for day, until the end of the of the of the ninety five World Cup. Do you really know your rugby? Do you always get your predictions right? Why not make some money then? Open an account right now with Tic Tac Bets and get up to 2,000 Rand and 20 spins with your first deposit. The link is appearing on your screen and I'll also put it in the description area. Please note that this is an affiliate link and I will make a little commission on it. Winners know when to stop. National Responsible Gambling Program. Toll free helpline 0800 006 008. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. Would you say that there was a particular moment where you realized that the entire country is behind you and you simply cannot let them down? Yeah, for, uh, what I'm saying is from day one, for, at practice, you know, when we, when we played trials from at, 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 at Wanderers, you know, there were so many people behind us and they give us the confidence. And yeah, so and from day one, one of the, the supporters was behind us. Casey, we spoke about those matches against Romania and Canada. And then in the quarterfinals, we played Western Samoa, as they were still called in those days. Also an opponent that we were expected to beat. And of course, we did beat them fairly comfortably when you look at the scoreline. But how difficult can it be to prepare for a team when you know you're supposed to win and you have to guard against complacency? Yeah, see what I'm saying, and you must just stick together. What I'm saying, as a team, we train hard. We, a big factor was our fitness, and and that's I think that's the one of the main reasons we won the World Cup. We was very fit, and that pulled us through. I want to talk a little bit about the fitness, Casey, because I had Joel Stransky on this show uh, a while back, and I told him that I'd heard that the fitness uh, was actually quite rigorous, and he said, no, 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 it wasn't rigorous, it was torture. While you were watching uh, the players in action with Ray Mort putting, the th uh, putting them through their paces, what were you thinking at that stage? No, that's what they said. They, we're going to train hard now. At the end of the day, when we lift that trophy, then we forget everything. The hard training... The, the sweat, the tears, the, they was really, we trained really, really hard. And I think that's, that's a main factor, our fitness. That's what pulled us through in the World Cup. And then after that win against Western Samoa, we played France in the semi-finals. I think it's fair to say that the conditions that day were dreadful. Had you ever seen anything like that in your years in rugby? N no. Yeah, yeah when, when I'm tour in New Zealand, we had that one game there in, in New Zealand, 81. That was a mud bath, but that is more or less the same in Durban. What the, what the riller was that game, you know, till the end. And, you know, when, uh, and there must I, must I give compliments to Dr. Late, who fight because they want to cancel that game. And he was fighting for that, that we have to play. And they, they, they get people to clean the field. And, you know, there was a lot of, discussed what we're going to do, they, the, the game is delay, and all what the guys want to, they can't slip because you know what happened in PE, and if we didn't play that game, we was out of the World Cup. And yeah, that's, luckily, uh, Doc Lake get us to play, and yeah, and what the roller till the, till the end. 
Yeah, that was just memorable. And thankfully, we won as well. Casey, the following day was the semi-final between England and New Zealand, and we saw Jonah Lomu literally run over the English players that day. What was going through your mind at that stage? Yeah, he was a difficult player, but, you know, I, I will never forget, you know, Ray Mort and, and, and Yapi Miller, what, what, a, what a player, and Hurst and, 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 and James Small. They said, Coach, you don't have to worry. We will handle Jomo. And that's what happened in the final. The players handled him. And they give him they, they didn't give him any space to move. You know, when when he f- get the ball, there was two, three, four players on him. So yeah, that was uh, that was our game plan. And of course, it was still the amateur era at that stage. Uh, Casey, did the Springbok squad actually stay together in a hotel or a camp and move around the country at that stage? Or did the players who were actually from the individual cities where the matches were taking place, did they just go home at the end of the match? No, we, had, we, we was based in Johannesburg. We stayed together. We After the games, we go there, train, and then we go to the to the fields where we played. So that that's... that's uh, our base was in Johannesburg. And then still on the topic of amateurism and professionalism, I also read in Francois Pinard's autobiography uh, that at that stage, uh, there were all sorts of stories about the Australian Kerry Packer trying to create a new professional rugby tournament. And Francois had spoken to the players individually and offered them contracts. I'm wondering, Casey, were you aware of that stuff or was that kept away from management? No, that was kept away from the management. I was not part of that. So we, we hear stories, but we... We don't know what was going on there. So that was that was strange for us. And then we know that a lot of the players like to have fun. I've heard all sorts of stories about Kurbis Visa in particular. I'm wondering, uh, Casey, did any of the players ever play any pranks on you? No, 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 not with me. But they 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 prank uh, uh, Mark Andrews in the after the first game, and uh, after that good win, Keith said to the players, "Okay, guys, you can go out tonight." and have something to drink but that's that's the last the last time you can do that and uh yeah so what what happened that night is 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 um uh the go the 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 guys went out and and they i don't know where they get the snook from and they 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 put it in in mark andrew's bed and when that morning he came to his hotel and he he was jump in the bed with a snook. So yeah, that's one part I can remember from, from, from the players. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, why not consider becoming a patron? You can click on my Patreon link. I'll put it on the screen as well as in the description box. And there will be great benefits for members. Let's get back to the interview. What was the message in the dressing room before the final? Yeah, what Kit said, guys, you train so hard for three months. And the ball is in your hand now. We came a long way. We're in the final. And he said, the ball is in your hand. We train hard. We work hard to win the, 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 to win the World Cup. And he said, come on, boys. That's why. Uh, let's go out and do it for South Africa for 40, 000, uh, 44 million people. And that's what happened. They've got so much confidence. And and yeah, so it, and the guys did what an unbelievable feeling, not for for the players but for the whole of, of of South Africa. And then of course there was also that famous moment where Nelson Mandela walked out onto the pitch wearing Francois Pino's number six jersey. I also understand that Madiba visited the Springboks at the training sessions uh, from time to time. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, you know he says was such a a great man, and he was so calm and. And all what he said is, come on, guys, do it for our South Africa, for our people. And that's what uh, the guys did. You know, I can tell you one story. The day before the final, it was around about 4 o'clock, we, 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 we did our captain, captain training. And then uh, Joel said to me he wants to do just a couple of kicks afterwards. And at that stage, the the the... The All Blacks arrive at the stadium. They are supposed to start at five o'clock, in, and uh, Joel practice a couple of of drops to the northern poles. And I will never forget. 
at the same site where he put over that last drop. His last drop at practice was a drop, and the 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 All Blacks was was just playing with the ball uh, at the back of the post in the in the northern stand, and and Joe the last drop, he training was a drop, and he put it through the post, and the All Blacks just look at the ball, go through the post, and we never think that's going to happen in a World Cup final in the last minute, in the extra time. That was one of the things I will never forget. Just back on Nelson Mandela, I've actually heard that no one actually saw him in that number six jersey until he came out onto the field ahead of the national anthems. Is that true? Yes, that was true, yeah. So that we were also was very surprised. And uh, yeah, that, that was also was motivated the, the players and the team, yeah. And Casey, I've watched that final back quite a few times, and it's my opinion that we actually looked very comfortable in that match and that maybe we didn't really need to go to extra time in order to seal the victory. I'm very curious to hear from a coaching perspective what you thought while you were watching the match. Yeah, I thought I thought, uh, I thought, uh, uh, Ruben Clear try was a try. And yeah, I think we, we, we controlled the whole game, I think. And yeah, so I also think that and yeah, at the end of the day, a win is a win. Doesn't matter how you win it. Absolutely. Casey, what does it feel like when the referee blows the final whistle and you've won the Rugby World Cup? Yeah, that feeling was unbelievable. Feeling. I'm just be part of the of the of the of that team was 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 the cherry on the cake for me as a player, as a coach. Yeah, so that was that was that was me my my the cherry on the cake on my rugby career, and, and then I, mean, I must say, and yeah, so I you know and and after that, Ruan was I think nine years old at that stage. So think, yeah, so so that then I must say when he became a Springbok, that was also a great feeling for me. And then I must ask you, Casey, on the topic of Ruan, how satisfying was it to see him go on and win a Rugby World Cup in the Tri-Nations and beat the British and Irish Lions? Yeah, that's, that's a great feeling, you know, for, for a dad, for your son to play that and play 87 test matches for his country. Uh, he made me proud. I think he's, he, he's, he's a great rugby player. He's a great thinker of the game. Yeah, I just want to... It was. It will be if he can just play more. If he had more chances to play, really, uh, in one position. But at the end of the day, it's still an honor to play for the Springboks, and he played for the Springboks. He played 87, 88 Test matches, so that's that's a great honor. It certainly is. Casey, many people will remember you as a great fullback back in the 1970s and 80s. What are you up to these days? Yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a businessman. I've got a... You know, in, in 95, in that same year of the World Cup, I just uh, uh, buy myself a Shell service station. I still got the service station. Yeah, in the past eight years, I'm in the gas business. So, yeah. It keep me busy, and uh, otherwise, what can I do? I must just keep on working. Sounds good. Casey, let's have a look again at the trivia question. Who scored the opening try at the 1995 Rugby World Cup? Do you know the answer, Casey? Uh, yeah. Isn't it Danny LaRue? Or was uh-huh. it Peter so- Hendricks? So, Peter Hendricks was the guy who scored the Springboks' first try at the tournament, but a few minutes before that, Michael Liner actually scored the first try. Oh, the, yeah, that's, that's right, yeah, yeah. For, for the Aussies, yes, yes. And, and luckily for us, that didn't lead to a victory as well, and we got set on that uh, memorable path towards winning the Rugby World Cup. Casey, let me say, it was lovely having you on Front Row Rugby today, an absolute honour and a pleasure, and I hope that we can have you on again in the future. Ah, thanks, Peter. Thanks for it. It's an honor for me to be on it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm also working on a lot of Rugby World Cup related content, and I'll put that in a playlist over here for you to go and watch. See you next time.